Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Now, we, the Lord gave us that title back there 35 years ago. No, longer than that, because um, that was the name of the radio broadcast, which was four or five years before we went on television. And, when I, and I inquired of the Lord. I said, Lord, what, what do I call this broadcast? And he boomed back at me. He said, a believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory. And then the scripture there in 1 John 5, 1 came up on the inside of me where it said, and this is the victory, even our faith. So, hey, listen up, because you got a voice, and it is the voice of victory. Father, we thank you for this broadcast today. We give you praise and honor, sir, and we yield to your word. We give ourselves to your word, your, your word, your power, your scripture, your spirit, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join me today in welcoming Brother David Barton to this broadcast? Thank you. David, I, now listen, I know you. I've known you a long time. You one of the busiest men I ever met in my life. Right up there with you. <laughs> and I, it is such an honor for you to, to, to come spend time with us on this broadcast. I love it, man. It's always good to be here. Yeah, always fun it, to have time with you. And uh, I just want to let you know how much I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Your ministry. Wall Builders Ministry. We were on vacation one time up in Colorado. And uh, oh, Jesse and Kathy and and Jerry and, and uh, uh, Carolyn, Savelle, and uh, who else? Uh, Dennis and, and Vicki Burke. Man, you had a real big we had, Oh, yeah. You had a bunch of you. Yeah, we, had, we were having a good time. We were doing a little bike riding around and a lot of preaching at one another. Yeah, year. good. And Happy and Jeannie Caldwell. And we were right downtown and we walked along and looked in here in, in this store in the display window, and they, it was right at the 4th of July, just past the 4th of mm -hmm. July. And, uh, you know, our Southwest Believers Convention is always the week of the 4th. Right. We went up there the next week. Well, they still had their 4th of July display in the windows of that store, right downtown. Most dynamite pictures you ever saw, great big posters, uh, and that, that display just kind of, took your breath away. It was, it was just dynamite. And I, I said, I got I, I to gotta know where they got these pictures, man. I went inside and um, I asked one of the girls in there, I said, where'd those great posters come from out there? She said, it's a ministry down in Texas called Wall Builders. <laughs> I thought, well, yeah. <laughs> That's my buddy's pictures out there. And I, I mean, right downtown, man, at That's the cool. store window. It was so great. And That's I walked cool. back out there. I said, I know this guy. <laughs> yeah. And of course, right in the corner, it said Wall Builders Ministries right there in the corner. Love Praise it. God. Love it. David, there's something the Lord has really, really, really been dealing with me about. Um, this has been a uh, this has been a part of my own personal ministry and faith tool for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Let's turn there. But here in the last um, well, particularly all of this year, going back uh, just a little while before uh, January of 2015, the power in this scripture, well, let me give you a little. Uh, years ago, I had driven Gloria to, uh, uh, I, if I remember right, it was she's picking something up at the cleaners or something. I had all the symptoms of the flu, and I hurt behind my eyes, hurt my hair, hurt. I mean, I'm hurting all over. And I'm sitting out there in the parking lot, waiting on her. <clears throat> I'd been reading First uh, Peter two twenty four, and it and my Bible was laying there in the uh, in the right seat, and and it was open, 
to that scripture and um, who his own self bare our sins in his body mm-hmm. and by his stripes you were healed. Well, I've been reading that. And the Lord, I, I wasn't aware of this scripture. I'd read it, of course, but I wasn't all that, that aware of it, particularly at that moment. But the Lord led me to do this. I picked up my Bible and here was 1 Peter 2, 24. Mm -hmm. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, up until that moment, thoughts drifting around, banging around in my mind. Oh, Lord, I wonder how long it's going to take for my faith to work in this thing. And da, 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 da. Man, nothing but unbelief about that. And, but he led me to do this. I said, Father, and I read that scripture. I choose to believe this. I announce to my Father in heaven. I announce to the Lord Jesus Christ. I announce to the Holy Spirit in me and all the angels around me and to every demon of hell, I choose to believe this. Something snapped Mm -hmm. in, in my mind. Now, in the book of Hebrews, you remember, it says we have this hope as an anchor of the soul mind, will, and emotions. Mm -hmm. That's where the battle is. Mm -hmm. That's where the decisions are made. And then as your spirit takes those decisions and activates them, that's when the power is really. Anyway, I I mean, I almost could physically feel just my mind just snapped into place. Mm -hmm. The unbelief was gone. Well, now I know why. let's, Let's read this. I call heaven and earth, that Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. In other words, you don't have any excuse. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, you choose life that both you and your seed may live. That you may love the Lord thy God and that you may obey his voice. Now, that means he has chosen to speak to you. It isn't that he isn't speaking. You need to choose to hear it. Now, for you may cleave unto him, for he is your life. He is the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord God swore unto our fathers. Now, let me point out something to you here. I'll tell you what, if this don't set you on fire, your wood's wet. You understand? Now, you know, listen to me here. See, he has already made his choice. He said, now you choose. Yeah. He has already chosen to bless you. He has already chosen to give you his life. He has already chosen that your seed after you may live. He has already chosen to be your God. He has already chosen to love you. He has already chosen to speak to you. He has already chosen to be there for you so that you may cling to him. He's chosen to be your life and the length of your days. He's already made his choice to do all that. Now it's your and my turn. Now, let's go to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I, or let's, let's, let's read it like that. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attend to their prayers. Now he said, I will. Now notice, David, he didn't say the whole nation. Right. 
He said, my people call by my name. Now, how many of us then does that take? Well, if you use the scriptural pattern here, when God was dealing with Abraham and Abraham was dealing with God about Sodom and Gomorrah, if there had only been 10, he would have healed the land. Well, David, there's more of us in this studio than that. Yeah. And think about all of you and I together here that at, at, on this broadcast today. So, are you called by the name of Jesus? Yes, amen. In Jesus' name, humble yourself right now. Well, how do you do that? The scripture says, casting the whole of your care over on Him. So right now, cast all of your care of this nation and, and the shape that it's in right now, right this minute. Don't, don't carry the care. Quit worrying about it and say, Father, I cast all my care over on you. I, hum I, humble, my I humble myself right now before you. You are the God of this nation because we're here. Do it right now. Now, pray and seek His face. Father, we seek your face. We seek your knowledge and your wisdom and your word concerning our nation. You said, ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. We're seeking, knocking, and asking, sir, and we receive it by faith. Did you do that right then? Well, do it right now. Just do it. I don't care how you feel about it. What does it have to do with any kind of feelings about it? Just do it. Then he said, turn from their wicked ways. Repent right now. Say, Father, I repent of every, any and everything in my life that is not pleasing to you. I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. And your word says you're faithful and you're just to forgive me of my sin when I confess them and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And sir, I forgive if I have ought against any. That's the main and big one. Do it right now. I forgive if I have ought against any and I receive my forgiveness in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we're reading this with our eyes. Now, do like I did. Get your Bible. 2 Corinthians 7 14. I announce to my God in heaven, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit that dwells within me, to all the angels in this room, and every devil of hell, Satan, I announce to you, I choose to believe this right now. As far as I am concerned, this land is healed because I Trust God. I just had a Holy Ghost thought. There you go. I got another scripture here. There you go. <laughs> yes. Father, see what I got in my hand? I believe, I choose to believe this. In God we trust. Yeah. Hallelujah. I made my decision. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to talk anything else. I'm not going to believe anything else. I don't care what the news media has to say. I know what God has to say. Mm -hmm. And He's working right now. Yeah. Now, you and I were talking about this earlier. Uh, <laughs> my, my. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Advocate General of the church, the director of all ministry in the earth, the top, as far as I know anything about, the most successful evangelist, I guess maybe ever, David, I've never read or heard of anybody that actually, by actual count, uh, led 1.6 million people to the Lord Jesus in one service. One meeting. I never heard of that by anybody else. And these are not just estimates. These are documented. They, they have a little, pr a little prayer book that once, uh, see, they, they, have, they have over a quarter of a million workers in those meetings when they have those big altar calls like that. And they, they pray with that person and they, that person signs that card and so does the, the prayer worker. They have to be satisfied that that person knew what they were doing and they actually accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior after they got to pray with yeah. them. So there's 1.6 million in one meeting. In, in, one, in meeting. one meeting. And that doesn't count all the other meetings. Oh, Lord. Yep. This is the time we've been, we, we've been supporting his ministries. There's been between 25 and 30 million mm -hmm. of those. Now, you ready for this? He called me. Who's he? Uh, Reinhardt. 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 Yeah, Reinhardt. Yeah, Reinhardt. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He called me. Brother Kenneth. I met him years ago, and all you could ever hear out of it, Africa shall be saved. He said it and said it and said it. He cut a swath. He said, Africa will be saved from Cairo to Cape Town. And, and the power of God cut a swath through that continent yeah. over the years. Well, you got churches over there now with a million members yes. in a church. Yes. What it has done to the continent of Africa. And, and of course, we Americans are so bad on our news, we don't know what's going on anywhere else in the world generally. But what's gone on in Africa, what's gone on in Central America, what's gone on in South America, et cetera. Massive revivals going on. Massive revivals. And, and churches that now have a million members. There's a church in Africa that's a mile long from the front of, of the sanctuary to the back. Isn't One that mile. Under roof. One mile. I'm going to be preaching next week for uh, Bishop of Utipo. Well, now, it, this is next week from right now, so it, it'll be, it, I'll give you the, you'll get the report of it <laughs> by the time you see this. But, uh, I mean, his, his church seats 54,000. Yeah. I've preached yeah. in there before. He called me some months ago and he said, we've had to go to two services. I said, really? Mm -hmm. And then he called me back and said, I need you to come. I said, okay. I said, are you still having two services? He said, no, we're having four. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, and, and now, God, uh, uh, Brother Bonke called me. He said, Kenneth, God has changed my assignment. He has brought me to the United States he said, I am now an American citizen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And he said, I love this country. And God has put this country in my heart. And he said, America shall be saved. Yeah. <laughs> and it just went all over me. Yeah. I said, brother, we're going to do it together. Amen. Just yes, like we did in Africa. But think about that. Think of, just stir yourself up a little bit. Isn't that what we just read? Yeah. He's healing the land. He's healing the land. And by the way, this, you know, Americans have a cocky attitude that says, wait a minute, we're Americans. We can take care of this ourselves. We've sent 85% of the resources of the gospel to the world for the last 200 years. We're the ones. Sorry, when America had a great awakening back in 1730 through 70, the greatest revival we've ever had, it was a foreign guy named George Whitfield who came here. Oh, no, wait, it was a foreign guy named... John Wesley and Charles Wesley. Oh, wait, wait. And so God sent all these yes, foreign sir. guys in and said, America, you need a revival. I got some guys I can send you yes, sir. that can do this. And so, Well, isn't that his pattern anyway? It is, it is. Well, look, look in the Bible how often, for example, the whole thing we have in Acts is that the apostles, whoa, you went to Cornelius. He's not the right group. He's outside of our... Well, Cornelius is the reason that we're all in this right now. Or look at the Samaritans, and Jesus kept hanging out with the Samaritans, and everybody said, you can't hang out he with that group. He wasn't supposed to be That's the there. wrong group. And so God always uses people outside the group you expect to do things you don't well, expect. Well, when, when you're in, in your own group, 
Uh, you can, like when Jesus was talking to the churches in the first uh, two chapters of the book of Revelation, you, in your own group, you can drift yeah. and make mistakes. You don't realize you're even right. making them. And if you've got one of your own preaching, he's thinking the same way That's you right. are. And he brings somebody from the outside that, and he, then he gives them insight into right. the situation in order to change. Well, you remember Jesus, said, Peter saw somebody casting out demons and said, Lord, we told him stop because he wasn't of our group. And Jesus said, I got groups you don't even know about. You know, <laughs> yeah. back up. You know, yes, he's sir. not doing it your way, but that's all right. I've got all this stuff, all these other groups that are working that I'm bringing together on this. And that's really, we've been praying for revival. We've been saying we got to humble ourselves and, and God will send healing. Well, he's doing it. Uh, he's and, doing and, it. I mean, here you've got Reinhard Bonnke coming in, 1.6 million converted in one service, and he's done that for all over those continents. And he and was now, he was running four, five, six hundred thousand a service on a regular that's basis. Right. That's right. Now, and think about this too, because this 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 is the the seed time and harvest um, principle of the kingdom of God. Where'd he get a quarter of a million? Workers. Prayer workers. Yep. They came out of his ministry. Yep. He trained them and taught them. Yep. Well, how many others? Those pastors all over Africa. That's right. In one way or other, either directly or indirectly affected by the ministry of Reinhard Bonnke. Mm -hmm. Well, David, how, how many other people on fire with the Holy Ghost do you suppose God's sending in here? I yeah. know Nigerians. I know yeah. of different people that God is sending in All here over the world. from That's Australia, right. from the other places South around Korea the world. South Korea is sending missionaries into America. Uh, Nigeria is sending missionaries into America. All over the world, God is sending in people. Now, it doesn't mean that Americans are going to be excluded for this because even in the Great Awakening, we had the American that, preachers as well as the other absolutely. preachers. Absolutely. But you had that new wineskin that needed to come mm. in. You had an outside influence with Woodfield, oh, and he yeah. changed the way they all thought, and it was good to have them all working together, but that's what God's doing now. And yeah, we're out of time. Quick. David and I will be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes.